I'd like to think about a beautiful little phrase found in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1 and verse 6, where we read, He has made us accepted in the Beloved. Beautiful, isn't it? And I want to think about the practical outworking of that idea. Let me tell you a little story. The Bronfman family were known as the New World Rothschilds. The Bronfmans had been tobacco farmers in what is now Moldova and had been driven out of the country because they were Jews. And they ended up coming to Saskatchewan, eventually to Manitoba, found out that they couldn't grow tobacco in the cold north. And so they began looking around for various things. And after several other projects, they eventually, Sam Bronfman particularly, got into producing liquor. And uh, he worked out of Montreal. This was during Prohibition in the United States and somehow found a way to bring liquor to Boston and New York and other cities in the eastern seaboard. Made a fortune, the Seagram's Distillery fortune. And the Bronfmans became famous for their Jewish philanthropy. They ended up acquiring all sorts of companies, got into the oil business, their old father told them there were two fluids, two liquids that kept the country running. One of them was petroleum and the other was liquor. And that's what they did. But you know, after some time, Sam wanted to become more respectable in society. And he actually tried to buy himself a senatorship in the Canadian government. That didn't work. I tried to get himself appointed to one of the boards of the universities where he endowed huge amounts of money, especially McGill University, and they didn't want him. I tried to get onto one of the bank boards where he had his untold millions, but nobody seemed to want him on the board. In the book that tells the story of Sam Bronfman, there's a chapter on his funeral, and it describes how at his funeral there were so many bank presidents and so many board members of the various university boards and how many of these uh, senators were there and so on. And the last sentence in the chapter said, Sam Bronfman had finally been accepted by the establishment. Imagine spending your life trying to be acceptable to other people. You know, when we live like that, we put our happiness into the hands of somebody else. So, if they don't applaud us and say we're wonderful, then it ruins our whole day. But here's a glorious truth. The Lord loves me. <laughs> he likes being around me 24-7. He loves to hear everything I say. He wants to be an intimate with me. And I'm accepted in the Beloved One. That's why we use the name of Jesus when we come into the presence of God. He delights to bless his Son and all those who belong to his son. As the Lord Jesus said, they're yours and they're mine. And in this wonderful link with God as our Father and Christ as our beloved, we find perfect acceptance. And so we can be content to let the world go by. We don't have to be approved by the world because we have the smile of God upon us. And I think so often of a little book, uh, one of the closest things that C.S. Lewis came to actually preaching the word, some university talks to college students during the war. And there's a little book called The Weight of Glory. And in that book, there's a chapter called The Inner Ring. And he talks about how these young men, as they grow up, they will be uh, called on to make decisions as to their future. And he said, you know, I challenge you to think of one occasion when you made a decision to be accepted by the inner ring that you're entirely pleased with. They let you know there's a little something we do as part of the in-group. It's maybe not quite kosher, not quite legal, but hey, if you want to do it, it may be scorning others. It may be something that, as he said, that makes you the president of the company or takes you to jail. But whatever the case, you'll be a scoundrel. And he described this longing to be accepted like peeling an onion. 
every layer you peel off, you find out there's another layer. There's another group a little more in than you are. And if you keep compromising to be accepted by these various groups, in the end, of course, if you peel an onion successfully, there's nothing left but tears. So God help us to get over this, not to be so concerned about what people think of us. If we seek to please the Lord, there will be some people who are pleased and others who will be displeased with us. But let that go by. We have discovered the secret of being accepted in the beloved one. And there we can rest. Whether the world applauds us or ignores us is of little moment. What does the Lord think? That's the key. That's what determines the value of everything in life is how does the Lord see it? What does he think of that? And when we finally settle into this wonderful relationship that we have with him, and say, Lord, today, I just want to make you happy. I want you to have happy thoughts. I want to have happy thoughts. And it's a simple life. It's a happy life. It's a focused life. It's a useful life. But it's also a life in which we can rest in being accepted in the beloved one.